Today, I want to discuss the real reason why you should start consuming liver. Liver is the number one nutrient-dense food on planet Earth. Number two would be oysters, but number one is liver. And it's not just the nutrients that liver will give you. There's something else that liver will do for a great majority of the population. And so hear me out, because at least half of you watching has this very specific problem that you can benefit greatly from consuming more liver. Now, you might already know that liver has the best bioavailable nutrients like vitamin A, and it has a ton of vitamin A. It has B1, B2, B3, B6, B9, which is folate. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, B12, choline. It has vitamin D. It has iron, the heme form of iron, which is very different than plant-based iron. It has copper. It's loaded with zinc, selenium, and many other trace minerals. It has phosphorus, and it also has all of the essential amino acids, and especially this compound called methionine, which I'll talk about in a minute. The two main common confusions people have with eating liver is that they have this idea that liver is just filled with toxins. Well, liver itself is not a storage for toxins. It helps you get rid of toxins, but it doesn't hold toxins. The fat cells normally hold toxins, but not the liver. And of course, the liver that I'm going to recommend you consume, if you can get a hold of it, would be grass-fed, grass-finished liver. Other point about liver, and some people will say, well, you don't want to have liver you know, very frequently because you're going to get an overload and toxicity of vitamin A or copper or iron. Well, if you look up the studies that talk about that, they never talk about consuming excessive liver, okay? They talk about consuming uh, individual synthetic vitamins like synthetic vitamin A, or they might talk about consuming too much copper. So of course, liver does not contain synthetic vitamins. Now I will say there has been one study that I could find and that was consuming um, polar bear liver and that's very toxic if you consume too much of it because the amount of vitamin A is just off the chart. But I don't even believe that you can create a toxic effect if you're going to consume it every single day. Now, of course, there's always exception. If you consume a tremendous amount of liver, potentially it could create a problem, but you probably notice the side effects and you would cut that back. But here's why the majority of the population should start consuming liver, because there's a very common genetic problem um, with our population. Apparently, it's a defect or mutation in a gene called MTHFR. Now, at first, it might look like an acronym for a dirty word or a swear word, but it's not. This gene, if it's altered, inhibits a certain enzyme that creates a cascade of problems in your body. In fact, this gene is probably the most important gene in your entire body. I'm going to explain why. Because if there's a problem with it, you'll have low methylation. Now, what is methylation? Methylation involves adding a methyl group. Well, that probably didn't explain anything. A methyl group is CH3. And methylation is really adding something to uh, a lot of different enzymes to create different effects. Without methylation, you're not going to be able to detoxify heavy metals. Okay. And that includes iron. Okay? So many people have an issue with too much iron, and iron will build up, and then the liver is affected. But with the methylation problem, you will have a situation where the iron is not breaking down, yet the iron is unusable to you. So you'll have symptoms of high iron and symptoms of low iron. So your feet and hands might be cold all the time, despite having a normal thyroid. So that's just one symptom. Another big problem is the lack of producing neurotransmitters. So what is that going to affect? That's going to affect your mood, specifically anxiety and depression. Another function is DNA repair. Now, is that important? Uh, yeah, especially if you want to prevent cancer. And with this enzyme problem, you'll have a tendency to be more at risk for colon cancer. You will also have a problem with inflammation. So let's say you're taking fish oil, turmeric, all these things to get rid of inflammation, you're doing fasting, but you still have inflammation. 
Well, that's because the cause of it is this other thing. It's a genetic thing. Now, this enzyme is also involved with producing energy, ATP. So you're generally going to be tired. You're not going to be able to have the full capacity of energy, despite how many hours of sleep you get, despite how good your diet is. It can also affect your cognitive function, specifically memory, focus, concentration. So this can lead to ADD, it can lead to dementia, and even Alzheimer's. Methylation also helps you break down things, okay? Like estradiol to lesser toxic forms of estrogen. So many people have estrogen dominance. In fact, if you have too much estrogen, you're at risk for breast cancer and cancer of the uterus and the ovary. And so people will start taking remedies like you might eat more cruciferous food or take a product called DIM or avoid soy. But if they don't have enough methylation, they're not going to be able to break down the estrogen as well. They might also have lower testosterone, despite how many things they try to do to fix that problem. Methylation also helps to protect against autoimmune diseases. It's intimately involved with your immune system, and especially to protect you against the adverse reactions that can occur when someone gets a vaccine. Not being able to methylate increases your risk of a stroke. So I hope you can see the importance of this whole chemical pathway. Well, here's the thing you need to know. This chemical pathway is dependent on two primary nutrients and some secondary ones too. But the two primary nutrients are folate and B12. So even though you are consuming them from your diet, you're just not going to be able to get enough because they're not able to be converted to the active form without this enzyme and methylation working correctly. In fact, if you end up taking the synthetic version of these two nutrients, which is in all sorts of things, which I will cover, that can create a buildup and make things a lot worse because there's a lot of toxicity symptoms from just those two nutrients as well, if they're in the synthetic form. You see that gene is all about converting uh, that nutrient into the active form. And so this is why you never want to take... Um, like folic acid, you want to take folate, which is the natural version. And the same thing with B12. You don't want to take the cyanocobolamine version. You want to take the methylcobolamine version. Now, this specific genetic problem um, is fairly recently discovered because of the DNA testing that's being done. And the great majority of the population probably has not tested their genes yet. And so there's a lot of people walking around with this problem, with these symptoms, and don't have a clue of this connection. But it's a very simple problem to solve if you understand it and you know what to do, which I'm going to explain. So I recently got a DNA test. So apparently I don't have this exact problem, but I have a version of it, which blocks my ability to use choline, as well as these other two nutrients, but not quite to the degree that someone with MTHFR we have. So in simple terms, what does this mean if you have this mutation with this gene? It means that you're always going to be deficient in folate and B12. And so the solution is just to take more of it. And it just so happens out of all the foods that you can eat, liver is at the top of the list. Liver has super mega amounts of folate and B12. And the other associated nutrients that go along with methylation. And that would be B2, B3, B6, choline, vitamin D, zinc, and methionine. Now, let's say, for example, you don't like to eat liver. Well, you're just going to probably have to get a supplement that has high amounts of the correct form of B12, B6, and folate. But there are four things you need to focus on, okay? Number one, you need to take more folate and B12. I already discussed that. And by the way, folate is also in dark leafy green vegetables, but it's also in liver as well. All right, number two, you want to avoid the synthetic folate and B12 that is in the enrichment process or the fortification process of various foods. If you consume the breads, the pasta, the cereal, the crackers, the biscuits, you are getting an enriched grain product with a lot of synthetic folic acid and B12. So this is just another reason 
why you should avoid grains. And when you consume nutritional yeast, many times it's fortified with synthetic vitamins. If you take nutritional yeast, you want to get the one that's not fortified, not enriched. All right, number three, you want to minimize your alcohol content. No more than a six pack a night. You don't want to drink excessive amounts because alcohol tends to make this condition worse. And that probably explains why I cannot tolerate alcohol. I mean, if I just drink a little bit, I feel like crap. Well, it's because of this genetic defect. Now, for those of you that don't know that I've addressed this humor, um, I was being sarcastic with the six pack, okay? I mean, just keep it below like maybe two or three drinks for now, okay? All right, number four, you might be taking synthetic vitamins right now and not even knowing that it's worsening this problem. In fact, if you just stop taking your synthetic vitamins, you might feel so much better. Now, how do I know the majority of the population is consuming synthetic vitamins? I'm talking about the folate and the B12. Because 99.9% .9 of all vitamins sold on planet Earth are synthetic. So that's how I know. So start reading the labels and get vitamins that are from food source or, or from natural sources. Now, since we did touch on detoxification, there's a really good video that I did on that that I'd love to share with you. And I put it up right here. Check it out.